So I'm I'm Jatin Sharma from uh, India, based in uh, Chennai. So I'm part of uh, this organization called uh, AI World School. We also have another organization called uh, Robotics, where we manufacture uh, physical robots for, uh, right from uh, kindergarten to middle school and high school. So we focus uh, for uh, kindergarten and early learning. We focus more on screen-free coding. Uh, where you can uh, teach uh, basic coding and uh, ideas about uh, AI and things like that without using any screen. So we have uh, various products like uh, Playbits, uh, RoboBricks, where you know, can uh, learn the steps of coding uh, without using any screen, using any laptop or mobile phone. Then for middle school, we have products like Pyro which uh, emphasize on uh, teaching them basics of computer science. And uh, the same uh, products can be used in high school using Bluetooth. They can, they're free to connect with mobile <laughs> that time. So they can do a lot of advanced programming. They can learn uh, uh, high, high level uh, programming, creating AI projects. And uh, two years before when pandemic hit, our physical uh, robotics product market was a little slow because uh, we were relying on a lot of educators and schools. So schools were uh, almost closed for a year. So that's when we thought, like, uh, why don't you create an online platform where we can uh, load all our uh, learnings and create a platform where a student and teacher can use it for teaching coding and AI. So uh, me and my uh, colleague, uh, Borwe, we will be talking about importance of uh, artificial intelligence in K-12 level. And we will also show you a couple of solutions that we have uh, came across and what are the uh, projects we have developed in uh, last uh, few years. We'll be taking you through that. So uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so as, uh, yeah. um, hello again, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Borwe. And uh, as we're saying that uh, we're going to just show you an idea of how uh, we have, uh, you know, been working with the schools in India, uh, especially, you know, uh, from here, we've been concentrating with uh, students over here, um, also with schools over here. And, uh, you know, uh, we are, uh, we're also been, we're like, trying to get in touch with educators from around the world as well. And uh, we thank Eloisa for, you know, we've uh... given a couple of presentations earlier. Um, to and it's you know it's a, it's a great opportunity to talk to you all once again. I, but I think I see some new faces also, and uh, we are always open to working with uh, you know educators from all over the world. Uh, uh, you know we can uh, we 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 benefit when we work together, especially when we're you know uh, in the goal of helping the students, and that is a, the main thing what we're also going to be talking about uh, today. So um, without further ado, uh, I'll just share my screen. I'll switch off my video so that maybe it can, that can help a bit. And uh, I'll just share my screen and we'll go to the presentation. Give me a second. So, yeah. All right, uh, Jatin, if you'd like to begin, you can just let me know. Okay, I'll jump in. Uh it's called uh, just AI learning experiences. So our our motive is to making students future ready. So what what we uh, focus on mostly uh, giving them the bear. Like when it comes to uh, elementary level, we have uh, created certain uh, curriculum through which we give them basic ideas about uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is not something which is new, which came like two years before, three years before, or anything like that. But uh, from last uh, two, three years, it's becoming very prominent and use of artificial intelligence is uh, so much that uh, it is important for us to uh, teach uh, artificial intelligence uses and uh, how to uh, create different programs from uh, uh, very early level. And uh, another another requirement is uh, like if you if you look at uh, different studies uh, conducted by various universities and uh, um, industrial uh, uh, companies who does a lot of research, so they are saying by 2030, 65 percent students uh, who are in school today graduate uh, and end up in a job that do not exist. 
so what what as an educator what we have to do is we have to at least make them uh, future ready with uh, certain skills where uh, they should be uh, assured of okay at least we know this skill we can fit ourselves in this so there are uh, three uh, core subjects which a uh, lot of uh, companies lot of research companies are focusing on that's like uh, computer science and engineering then um, ai and data science so that's uh, picking up well so this is like uh, 20 years before you have a lot of land, you are considered a very rich man. But today you look at the richest companies in the world, they hardly have any offices. What they have is all data. You, you look at all the big companies like uh, Google, Excuse Facebook, why, why they are big. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. We, we experience yeah. some kind of echoes for when you talk. Do you hear, you all hear some echoes or just me? Uh, the sound when he talks. Is that okay for you? I'm not hearing uh, the echo. No. no. For, me, oh, no. for me, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. It's just for me. So that's okay. I'm sorry. Uh, we have okay. a question. Okay. Uh, All... uh, yes. Uh, what Meritus, the name of the school, what is that? Meritus. Meritus. Okay, Meritus, Meritus AI Learning Solution. That's that's the name we have came up with. Under which we have uh, organizations like uh, AI World School, where we offer uh, AI learning uh, platform globally. It's a self learning platform. We also have other uh, uh, entity under uh, Meritus AI Learning, which is called AI School of India which is a tutor-led uh, AI learning school where uh, students can avail classes through tutor-led. Uh, the classes are delivered online, but uh, there is a live tutor where uh, it's it's like your classroom is online classroom. But when it comes to AI school, it's completely virtual. You have the uh, you have your study materials in the LMS. You have to log in and learn by yourself how you Remy is um, operating that way. And we, uh, we uh, our uh, main company, when we started uh, 10 years before, it is uh, Robotics uh, USA India, where uh, we were concentrating on making robotics products, uh, STEM toys, STEM tools and solutions uh, right from kindergarten to uh, high school. So Meritus is a combination of merit and things that so that is a cool name our founders found so we call it as uh, Meritus AI Learning Solution. So in the okay, uh, towards, towards end of the presentation we'll yeah towards end of the presentation we will uh, show you some of the AI uh, platforms that we have created uh, using different existing tools and uh, some of the applications mobile apps that we have created for uh, teaching AI. Well, Bore will demonstrate all those uh, towards the uh, um, end of the session. Okay. So, and um, another studies, yeah, another, another study is showing that uh, engineers who come out of uh, colleges, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, talking about uh, all engineers, but uh, mostly, I have seen in India. Uh, so the engineering graduates, when they come out, they are not uh, fit to join a company as an engineer because uh, what they learn in colleges is not actually uh, applicable in the industry because they are learning a curriculum which is very old. So it is very uh, important uh, as an educator for us to make our uh, students give the up updated uh, curriculum and uh, the things which are going to, we have to be visionaries. We have to teach them something which will work in the future, not something which happened before. And you, uh, yeah. There are a lot of uh, data keep showing about uh, AI. So the forum, it's showing artificial intelligence will create about uh, uh, 133 million jobs end of 2022. So we are in 2022. So maybe we are in this phase when uh, uh, we will be experiencing uh, 
or you, you can uh, see in the job portal if you go you will always see vacancies coming for uh, uh, candidates who are uh, well equipped with uh, ai either uh, to operate a ai uh, program like uh, there are a lot of softwares these days people are using where they uh, they have to do a lot of uh, data science work and things like that so the students who knows uh, to operate those softwares they get a job uh, uh, quickly and uh, the requirement of uh, software engineers or ai developers is also high because uh, most of the companies were doing uh, uh, work in a conventional way they all are transforming into digital and um, ai is uh, very essential for them so it is uh, so that's another reason why we need to uh, teach uh, ai right from uh, early uh, age of education so uh, as an educator no, our responsibility is not only to uh, tell them about what is ai or uh, teach them how to create a ai platform or uh, teaching them some softwares okay you do this you do that this is uh, image recognition this will translate different languages we are very important for us to also tell them how to use it properly uh, they are, even here in india what's happening there are a lot of young kids uh, they are they are into cryptocurrency and uh, things like that and they are getting into things which uh, they are not supposed to be at that particular age and there are a lot of good things happening, a lot of uh, bad things also happening. So as an educator, it is our responsibility to spend the right way, how to use it really, uh, what not to do, what to do. And uh, and if you, if you look at today's kid, uh, uh, my is just five years old and uh, knows much more than what I know about my cell phone. He can go and uh, within a second, he can find out new features, which... Uh, after using for so many years, I, I take time to find out. So people, so kids are becoming um, advanced. So uh, being educators, it's our duty to uh, uh, they, uh, use their smartness in the right. So as I was mentioning, uh, as a solution, we have created the uh, curriculum for uh, teaching AI. And in, in our uh, curriculum, we are uh, focusing on a uh, few things like, uh, for, for example, uh, when, uh, when we are talking about care opportunities, uh, data science, data analytics, uh, engineer, AI engineer, research scientist, big data scientist, machine learning, these are a few things uh, that uh, uh, we, we need to focus on and uh, right from uh, 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 early learning, we need to uh, give them basic ideas about this thing so that uh, if, if uh, for example, if you if you are a certain age and tell them, okay, guys, from today you have to do this. This will be a shock uh, for them. So from uh, early learning from kindergarten level, if you give uh, them inputs about this thing, so when the right time comes, they will be able to grasp the things uh, faster than the other students. So it becomes very important for us. So. Well, what we have done is we have created a lot of blog-based programmings for uh, you know, elementary school uh, children. I'm sure you are aware of uh, Scratch. So we have created platforms using uh, Scratch and uh, Snap. So where uh, using Scratch, they will be creating a machine learning uh, program uh, to identify different faces, to translate different languages. So uh, they don't have to do any uh, script-based high-level programming. So to start with, they can just drag and drop and create a uh, platform. So that not only give them the idea about AI, also give them the confidence that yes, we can create something. We are we are we are we are on the right path uh, where the world is moving. So that kind of confidence we need to build from uh, uh, childhood. So how uh, meritus? Yeah. Eloisa, you asked me what is meritus, so now I'm going in a little deeper and uh, how, how uh, meritus AI is uh, helping provide AI learning experiences. So here, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have uh, AI, AI School of India. So AI School of India is an online uh, uh, tutor-led uh, platform where uh, 
you have, you have a teacher online who will be guiding you through the different lessons and uh, who will be helping you creating your uh, project works and uh, and also uh, uh, helping you how to operate different uh, uh, extensions, AI extensions, how to uh, make your programs, things like that. And uh, then we have AI World School. AI World School is completely virtual. It's self-learning. And uh, these lessons are created in such a way we have like so many videos and uh, presentations. So once you go through the video, you can just uh, go to the platform and uh, follow the instruction in the video and create your own program. And the more you uh, practice, more you create your own projects, you will uh, understand more. And you, you basically, it's a very uh, self-independent course where you can, you can learn independently. Uh, but in India, uh, we are we are doing it through tutors because Indian students still uh, need the help of uh, students. Not not like many other countries where uh, uh, very young kids are able to understand the concept by themselves and very independently learning. But here in India, we will need uh, tutors, so we are keeping it as uh, tutor-led courses. And for the global market, we are offering uh, self-learning courses. And then we have uh, robotics, uh, that's where we started about uh, uh, almost 11 years before. Uh, we, we have seen like we, uh, our, our founders have schools in India, about uh, six schools. We run uh, Indian curriculum and international curriculum. So our uh, founders, they've, uh, they, they've understood the need of introducing STEM education and robotics in the schools about uh, 12, 13 years before, and they were doing that. Then in that journey, they realized that uh, there is a gap where uh, there are a lot of uh, educational tools required to uh, give practical knowledge about uh, STEM and robotics to students. And that's when we started manufacturing our own uh, educational robots, or you can call it as STEM solutions or STEM tools. And uh, we started uh, going to different exhibitions, uh, do bad show IST in US. And that's when we started meeting a lot of other educators from uh, different parts of the world. And then we started promoting our products globally. A lot of educators from uh, US, uh, Canada, Australia, Germany, Netherlands started using our product and started giving us back that, uh, yeah, this is an amazing product. This kind of uh, fine tuning is required or this kind of changes in the curriculum will be great. So then, uh, we collaborated with uh, many of them and uh, constantly improving on our product and uh, offering uh, STEM and robotic solutions globally. And we, we also, we have a uh, foundation also, it's called Play Foundation in India, where we, it's a part of a CSR activity where we have underprivileged students uh, getting knowledge about uh, robotics, STEM education and AI. We are, we are working with a lot of uh, NGOs. We are working with a lot of uh, underprivileged uh, communities where we go and conduct free classes on coding, uh, robotics, and AI. Uh, and uh, we have taken a lot of underprivileged school students to global platforms like uh, uh, Lego First League uh, competitions, uh, robotics, uh, we are those kind of competitions. We take them to the global market, uh, so the global uh, 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 robotics uh, feel what is happening and they get uh, inspired and you'll be surprised some of these students who has never seen a cell phone in their life because they're very uh, they, they come from a very socially uh, uh, backward uh, uh, community where their father their parents cannot afford a cell phone uh, cannot even sometimes they cannot even afford a television in their house so first time they are seeing a computer or uh, uh, some kind of robotic products in the lab when we organize these uh, workshops or special classes for them. And you'll be surprised uh, uh, coming from that kind of a background, they are creating their own chatbot, creating uh, uh, various uh, STEM products and going to global competitions and winning prizes. It's really appreciable. So the, uh, let me, let me uh, talk about the curriculum set uh, we are offering to uh, global market. Uh, so uh, in, uh, most most of our curriculums uh, are created by uh, our engineers and educators, and we also collaborated with uh, professors from Oxford University, professors from uh, Gas University, 
and uh, a lot of uh, educators from IST. And uh, all our courses are uh, uh, mapped with uh, I, uh, IST, uh, NGSS, and CSTA, Computer Science uh, Standard USA. And uh, for our AI curriculum, we are following AI for K-12, uh, uh, big, big, uh, five big ideas of AI. And uh, we, we also uh, include uh, things like collaborative learning and uh, uh, Mora, can you go to the next slide? So, yeah, so I'll, the, I'll, take, uh, uh, I'll, I'll explain to them about the email structure. Yeah, okay, 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 thanks, yeah. Well, yeah, so Jatin has just uh, given you an idea about uh, our, our organization. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is um, I'm just going to give you a brief summary as to what we've been doing, um, you know, throughout the, um, throughout the past, uh, since June 2020, when we started our uh, you know, program. So we just, in brief, we ran a, we ran some, we have run a summer camp. We've also run a COVID warrior contest, uh, AI COVID warrior contest. I'll explain what this is a little later. We're also running one ambassador program called Indian Mama's Code. Uh, to the schools, we are reaching out to them using something called AI Lab. And we also conduct uh, constant webinars for students in, in, in India uh, with experts in, from AI. So let me just go to the next one. So the AI summer camp is, uh, as the name says, uh, it's a special summer camp where students use our platforms to learn about AI. It's just about, uh, you know, for an entire month. And since uh, since last year, everyone was at home. So it was a virtual summer camp also. I think the, maybe the, the first of its kind, uh, thanks to the pandemic. Uh, the AI COVID contest, we held it in two fronts. One was in India and the other one was uh, across the world. Uh, in India, we saw participation from around 600, sorry, 6,000 students from all across the country and from more than uh, 400 schools. And uh, it was a very nice, uh, good, uh, it was a very good experience. And we had uh, Mr. Ruzbe Aliabadi, uh, he is the CEO of Ready AI. And we had Dr. Prakash, who is an AI expert from IM Lucknow, uh, handing over the prizes to the students on the uh, competition day. And uh, we also, as I mentioned, we had uh, you know various webinars with um, experts in the field. Like, uh, for example, one of these is uh, on, on the topic called as our digital vaccines, the next step to fight COVID-19. Uh, this was by uh, Mr. Bhargav Shiprakash, who is the founder of Trends Learn Incorporated. He is working with uh, Stanford University. Uh, sorry, so he's working with uh, Carnegie Mellon. Daniel, sorry. Yes, Could you speak a bit slower? Okay, okay. Uh, so we sure, can sure, understand sure. better, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You. Sure, sure, sure. All Thank right. You. So I, I'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll just repeat this again. Um, as I mentioned, uh, under the milestones, uh, we've also been running, um, uh, you know, constant webinars with experts in the field, especially in the field of AI, for the students across uh, India. Um, for this, we had uh, Doctor, I mean, sorry, uh, Mr. Bhargav Shiprakash who is working on a project called Digital Vaccines with the Carnegie Mellon University. So seeing how these new, uh, how this new method called Digital Vaccines can help students, you know, uh, it's like a behavioral learning science uh, that can help them to, uh, you know, uh, uh, see how they're, uh, you know, what are the basic patterns they're doing, uh, going about in their day-to-day -day life. And we also had a guest speaker, uh, Ms. Lara Orlandik from EPFL in Sweden, or oh, sorry, in Switzerland. And uh, what she had done is she had talked about her app called as CoughFit. Um, CoughFit is a, you know, it, it's an application where uh, anyone can just uh, know whether they have COVID-19 just based on the sound of the cough. So what they need to do is, you know, hold the phone close to their, um, like, for example, like this, hold it close and just cough into, cough into the elbow. Um, and then, you know, it records the sound and then it goes and compares the sound of their cough against a database. And it is said that 68% of people who have COVID exhibit a dry cough. So you know, it, it, gives, it shows how AI is being used in this particular application. And the students really enjoyed this uh, you know, uh, seminar. And we also had a talk by uh, some uh, Indian scientists, uh, Dr. V.K. Chandrasekhar. Um, they were doing, uh, you know, they, along with other scientists in India, they were doing um, a, 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 you know, a statistical, a statistical models as to how they can predict the different waves, you know, in the, in the, in the with the pandemic. Dr. Shaker was talking about whether a third wave is imminent. 
that uh, around that time when we had the session, we were still in the second wave. You know, uh, we were still at the peak uh, peak time. The wave here in India for the, uh, the second wave in India ended around uh, maybe um, August September. So we were still in the peak, and he was just show the students how scientists you know collect the data, how they uh, learn from that data, and how to use it to predict the different waves that are going to happen uh, across various countries. And we also ran uh, some uh, PDP programs, professional development programs for teachers. Uh, one of these is the Teachathon in 2021. This was with the uh, Indian Institute of uh, Education Management. So we had a series of uh, you know, uh, workshops as to how teachers can teach AI to their students. Uh, so it was a, we had a series of about uh, 6,000 teachers, you know, uh, our team handling different batches and uh, you know, uh, this, this is just one of the batches. And we also ran um, workshops with students from all over, from various parts of India. So uh, this is with uh, HT. Uh, Hindustan Times is a newspaper, very famous newspaper in India. And they ran this per session uh, for students uh, from grade six to eight for them. And uh, as I told you, this is uh, one of our um, ambassador, this is our ambassador program. This is called as Indian Mama's Code. So basically what we do is, um, Especially for, uh, especially for, for uh, here in India, what happens? Um, some of the women, uh, immediately after college, they get married, okay? Or even before college, they get married and they just become housewives, all right? So um, they don't, uh, some of them don't pursue an education or, they, or due to family pressure, they drop. So our initiative, what we do is we uh, train these uh, mothers who are interested and we teach them how to teach AI to the children in their communities and in their neighborhoods. So we've got uh, around uh, four or five of them working with us right now, just in Chennai, teaching uh, AI to the children in their neighborhoods. Uh, so they become like our ambassadors. And so we, we basically provide them the training. We also help them. And some of our trainers also sit along with them in the classes just to help them you know, uh, get into it and uh, so that they're teaching it properly. It's a very, uh, you know, uh, and uh, right, right now they're able to teach uh, the students, you know, on their own. Uh, it's it's a very nice program over here. Um, another way in which we're reaching out to the schools is uh, called as the AI lab for schools. Uh, what we're doing over here is, um, see, uh, schools we are telling them that since they already have a computer, they don't need to add any other extra equipment. They can just use our platform directly on their computer systems. Since their computer systems already have access to the internet, they can directly use our platform. Our platform also has the, uh, you know, the, it's a repository of the resources, such as the lesson plans, the uh, presentations, the programming platforms, which the teachers and the students can utilize directly. And, uh, you know, it's mapped to um, an AI curriculum, which uh, here in India we are following. So in India, uh, the uh, most popular educational board over here is called the CBSE. It is the central board for secondary education. And they are making, uh, like, uh, as per one uh, education, uh, one, uh, as per the national education policy in 2020, they're making, uh, uh, they're, they're going to, the, sorry, they're making um, an option for students to study AI from grade eight to grade 12. All right, so they can choose as an elective subject what we're doing is we're working with the schools also, providing our uh, lesson plans, providing our platforms for them to use. And uh, uh, this is an example of uh, like, we're working on, on a framework where we are teaching AI STEM, it's a kind of AI STEM coding robotics, which we're offering towards the schools. Okay. So um, as, uh, as my colleague uh, Jatin was mentioning earlier also, we are collaborating with uh, educators, not only from India, from all over the world, so what I'd like to do right now is I will share my other screen and show you all uh, one of our platforms. And we welcome you as educators over here and even your friends who are also interested in teaching AI to students. Uh, we would love your feedback. We would love your um, opinions. We would also love you to play around with the platform and let us know how, uh, you know how you can use it to teach students. So before we do that, let me just share my screen. I'll just share a new, I'll just jump to a new screen. Give me a second.
Um, is the screen visible? Yes, okay, we can see. You. Yeah. All right. So um, uh, what we, I'm just going to show you, uh, you know, very quickly, like um, as he mentioned earlier, we are, we, are, we are following the guidelines as proposed by the AI for K-12 initiative for teaching AI to students from any grades. So we're following the five big ideas of AI. Um, so the first step is perception as to how computers see or perceive the world around them. And it can be either through the cameras or the microphones. Uh, number two is, uh, so basically step one is how does it, how, does, how do the computers collect or robots or AI devices collect the data? Uh, step two is how do they, uh, you know, uh, store the data in various data sets and how do they understand what kind of data they've collected? Uh, step three is how they learn from that data. They keep going back to the data sets and uh, learning from that. Step four, natural interaction. How well does, uh, how good is the interaction between you and your AI device, whether it's computer or robot? Does it speak back to you? Does it show emotions on its face? I mean, on the screen or what kind of interaction that, you know, how do, you, how do we have that kind of interaction? Is it as natural or as human as possible? And last but not least, what kind of impact is it having on, you know, on the, um, on society, on the environment, uh, whether it's a positive or whether it's a negative impact. And uh, these are also some teaching methodologies that we follow in our classrooms. Uh, we ensure that the students uh, carry out some computation thinking activities. This can be done through some uh, CS Unplugged activities. I'm sure uh, many of you know about CS Unplugged. Um, you know, uh, the, like you don't require a computer to teach um, uh, computer science. And uh, you know, they, it's basically um, they carry out some um, uh, uh, some computational thing. Uh, say like uh, computer science fundamentals, like sequencing, algorithms, um, uh, conditionals, debugging, and so on. And when it comes to design, the, the, the design thinking principle, what we do is we follow this uh, spiral. So, say for example, in a classroom of about uh, sixty minutes duration, uh, we follow. We start with ask, imagine, and plan. Okay, uh, so uh, let, uh, so let, uh, I'm sorry, I have the slides ready. So I, can, I can explain that a little better. And uh, we also make sure that uh, every student, uh, you know, they follow the project-based learning and it does not just focus on theory. They should combine theory with an application to learn the concepts much better. So say for example, if we are teaching something like machine learning, so how do we do that? With this, we're going to be using, uh, our, our, you know, a, a problem we built upon uh, on top of Scratch called as Scratch for AI. So as I mentioned earlier, so we'll start with, uh, in the classroom about 60 minutes duration, we start with ask, imagine, plan. Now ask is where the teacher, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, let, help, let students ask whatever, uh, you know, doubts and questions they have about a topic, whether it's machine learning or whether it's about uh, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, or whatever it is, the uh, AI topic that we'll be talking about, the, they clarify their doubts within this time. Then, imagine the teacher explains to them how they'll be doing the project like you know whether how they'll be collecting the data how they'll be learning from the data and how they'll be applying what they are learning from the data and then plan so what do you need uh, so uh, whether they need any special tools for that particular program so for example here we, you know we're saying that we're going to train the computer to recognize three different hand gestures and then when it comes to uh, play rating so that is where the students will start working on the program under the guidance of the teacher. Remixing, so giving them some bit of time to add their own modification or adding their own innovations to the program. And uh, last but not least, how, do, how, did, how are they going to um, uh, share the, uh, like the teacher also encourages them to share the project with their friends, with their uh, parents, with their families, with their grandparents. And you know uh, that helps build up their uh, confidence levels and building up the other 21st century skills. So I'll just share my screen now uh, to the platform and just give you uh, an idea of, um, so I'm sure many of our educators over here are, are familiar with this platform. Uh, is this screen visible right now, this new screen? Uh, is, uh, is everyone able to see the Scratch uh, for AI platform? Yes. Yes. All right, thank you, thank you. So, um, so as I was mentioning earlier, uh, the, we, we welcome uh, all the educators over here and uh, any other uh, and your friends also who are interested in teaching AI to use this as a tool for, uh, you know, for teaching your students or for reaching out 
So what we've done is uh, we have, uh, I, I know it looks like Scratch, but there is a difference over here. Um, we have added our own AI extensions to it. So you can, uh, you know, you can add AI functionalities to your program. See, you know, you can do, uh, you can carry out various AI programs like, uh, you know, machine learning, you can carry out speech recognition, uh, teachable machines, post detection, and so many other programs are there. So say, for example, um, I want to teach my students something like, you know, post detection. So I'll just, I'll just show you a demonstration of that. Give me a second. Uh, let me just switch up my camera and zoom, okay? So it's not, uh, I'll just re restart this. Oops. And I, I just let me log, log, log back in. Bruno, depois você me explica, tá? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm back. Let me just share my screen. Uh, can you see it now? All right. So, I can see... Um, you can see some bit of dots around my face. This is the PostNet um, uh, um, PostNet extension. So if I am clicking down here, so what these uh, different dots do is they help you coordinate the X and Y. Uh, they help you correspond X and Y coordinates based on different parts of the body. Say, for example, with the eyes, the ears, the nose, um, the shoulders, elbows, and so on. So it's a little bit of a, it takes a bit of uh, time to build this program also. So what I'll do is I'm just going to run the program and show it to you. So I started the program and it, the dots are following my uh, face wherever it goes. And uh, if I lift my arm up, you can see you know, uh, like, you know, almost like a skeleton is uh, forming. <laughs> so, and if I stand up here, yeah, let me just stand up a bit. So Whoa. it goes all the way, cool. all the way down. <laughs> uh, I think you can take my leg also. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's like a concept. I, I'm sure some of you also would have explored this uh, on uh, something called as Google's Teachable Machines. And you would have seen, you know, they, you would have trained it to recognize different poses. But uh, we, what we're doing is the students are actually building the program and uh, teaching the uh, computer to recognize different parts of the human body. You know? like for example, over here, if I click on right eye, the sprite, it is uh, showing the program that you know it should go to the X uh, coordinate for left eye and the Y coordinate for right eye. If I click on right eye, so basically it's uh, the students have to build the program and just coordinate accordingly. And uh, say for example, for creating those lines which will join in my uh, wrist and my elbow okay so you can see over here this connection you know, we were using the pen uh, the pen blocks to create that connection uh, the, uh, between the wrist and the elbow and also for the shoulders and uh, it goes away all the way down to the legs all right so this is one particular uh, program uh, let me show you another one i'll just load it All right, so this is a very sim a simple program for uh, speech recognition. So we, uh, it, uh, we, this is just like a starting point and the students can add more and more blocks as they wish. Um, so say for example, 
example, uh, they want to, um, you know, uh, make it like a chatbot. Uh, they can, uh, you know, provide the, the different ways in which the computer should reply. Uh, for example, over here, uh, let me just test it out and uh, just see if you can be able to hear it. So if I say hello, the computer should reply, you know, it should display hello to you too. And it should also reply that back to me. So I'm just going to run the program. Hello. Hello. Oh, you did not hear me properly. So, okay. Uh, let me do one thing. I'll just mute myself on Zoom and then I'll run the program. Give me a second. Yeah, so it was uh, crisscrossing with Zoom. He's not able to hear me. Um, so yeah, uh, so let's uh, have a look at another phrase. Um, so let's say thank you and see how it responds. Can you mute my We are, we are not able to hear you, Bolin. Sorry, sorry, very sorry. I, I forgot to unmute myself on yeah. uh, Zoom. <laughs> sorry. So uh, as, I was, uh, as I was saying, uh, let me show you how easy it is to build a program. Uh, I'm just going to show you how where, you know, children can create an image classification program based on objects which are there at home. Um, so I'm going to build, uh, you know, I'm going to be using the machine learning blocks. I just went over the extensions uh, and clicked on this. And, uh, you know, so I've just taken out two empty data sets, label one and label two. They are, these are like two boxes, which I'm going to fill up with the data. So uh, I've also just marked these two so that we can see how much data is going inside. Uh, for the first object, I'm just going to use my phone, placing in front of the computer uh, webcam. And I'm going to click on train label one. So the training process has begun. And, uh, if I click on train label one, you can see that it is, uh, you know, just taking image snapshots and collecting this as data and storing inside label one. I'm just going to give it about uh, 50 image data samples. Okay. Now for this object, I'll just be using the spray bottle. Let's put it okay. just in front of the camera. And I'm just going to do Click on train label two. Same thing. I'll keep on clicking and providing you with about 50 image data samples. So sometimes the students in our class ask us, why are you giving so much data? You know, we can just uh, make do with uh, maybe 10 or 15 or 20. And that's when we learn that why it's important for the computer to have, you know, so much data for it. But it's better for it to learn. Uh, and, you know, this is maybe for the simple program, it's uh, not that much required. But for uh, much more uh, complex programs, more, the more data the computer has, the better it is to learn. All right. So we have uh, two, um, uh, uh, you know, two data sets. Oh, Daniel. With, uh, uh, the the yes, yes, hello, sir. Uh, one question we have here: um, Can yeah, we yeah. Uh, try this oh, yeah. program? Do you have a guest account or something that we can try for free, just to try? Yes, yes, our... yes, definitely. <laughs> That, that that that's what we were saying we're inviting you to collaborate with us you know you can yeah. you can work uh, we'll give you the access and you, you know we'll, we'll send you we'll send you a google yes. sheet or something where you can send your names and uh, your mm -hmm. organization name and email id i'll create uh, login x for you You're, by using that login access you can explore the platform yeah yeah so that's what towards the end of the session we were planning to tell that you know uh, we will uh, we'll share a google um, and uh, once you get the details, we'll give you the access to this. And you, you, please feel free to explore as much as possible. All right. 
So I think Insiom was asking. Right, we are so curious about, about that to... now, you know. We are curious. <laughs> yes, we want to try. <laughs> Yes, and, and, and as and, and, you know, when we work that, together, that was we can always. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, uh, just going back. Uh, so going back to this, uh, how do we make the computer tell us what kind of object it is seeing? So we just use a couple of uh, conditions. So I'm just uh, taking out two over here, and I'm also going to be using two equals two from the uh, operators def category. And I'm going back to the um, machine learning blocks. Okay, it's gone all the way down. Just give me a second. Yeah. So I'll just take out this label reporter block. It's over here. Let me just. Zoom in so it's easier for everyone to see. All right. So the first condition is uh, what happens when the computer sees the first object. So we're going to point it towards uh, label one. I'm just changing the value here to one and placing it over here in the if condition block. And for this one, we're going to change it to number two if it sees the second object, which is the bottle. All right. Now we have two conditions. We also need to provide an action for every condition. So we're just going to start with a very simple, um, you know, we're just uh, make, going to make the uh, computer speak out the name of the object. So I'm just doing a save lock. And the first object was the smartphone. And the second object was the um, spray bottle. All right. So uh, the program is almost complete. We're just going to add a few more elements. Uh, one is we're just going to add, give a wait block to give it a bit of processing time between the two, you know, when it sees the two objects. Okay. So I'm just going to stack them up together and uh, put them in the sequence. So we have two conditions, as we mentioned. Uh, if it sees the first object, it's going to point it towards label one and it's going to speak out the name of the object with points to label two. Similarly, it's going to speak out the name of the uh, object, that's spray bottle. Um, if we can start running this program, but now it's going to run one time. So we have to put it in, in a forever block to keep it running continuously. And, uh, let's start off the program. We're we'll just going to use and when the green flag is clicked. All right. So as you know, for since we have based it, uh, we have built it on top of the Scratch for AI platform. Sorry, we built on top of the Scratch platform. It's something easy also for kids to, you know, get used to it, especially the all the users of Scratch. And they, they, they can just get to know that they can add their own AI extensions to the program, all right? So let me test this program. I'm just going to put the object in front. Okay, smartphone. Uh, can you see it changing? Yes. So, you know, uh, one of the uh, remixes that the children have with this program, especially, you know, when, when it came to the uh, AI COVID warrior contest is some of them use masks, you know? So they took uh, image data samples of themselves wearing masks and not wearing masks. And the small change what they did is if the, you know, if the first condition, they're wearing a mask, they just change the value over here to say you are safe. <laughs> And for the second set of the, uh, images where they're not wearing a mask, <laughs> they put something like, you are not safe, wear a mask. So they're relating it to the you know, particular con what's happening in the world, you know, uh, how to uh, follow the precautions, how to uh, maintain, uh, uh, maintain the um, you know, a proper social distancing and all that. So all you know, children are quite smart and we, we all know that. So how do we help them? Uh, use such tools to um, to create to to to, to uh, relate to real world experiences. All right. So this is just you know a brief about the platform what we can do. Uh, our latest extension is something called as uh, NLP with Scratch. So this is using the BERT uh, the, the BERT uh, algorithm in Google. So uh, let me just demonstrate this. Uh, it's still a little bit in the works. So say for example, uh, you can just create, what it does is just like in your Google search algorithm, it looks for certain words in it. Um, so say for example, over here, find 
uh, find the answer, what did John see? So this par uh, paragraph over here is, when John was driving Mary to work, they saw a purple cow by the side of the road. All right. So this is, you know, I'm just going to uh, just put this over here. So when I run the program, oops, let me just, uh, It's a, it's a, you know, it's, we're still working on uh, this one, but uh, should be almost. So that's what we need. Uh, you know, it'll be good if uh, we can get the feedback from other uh, educators as well. So over here, yeah, I think it's not uh, working that. Sorry, it's still a bit. <laughs> it's still a bit in the testing phase. So it's not working that well. But yeah, I'll I'll just let you know. So just one of the new things that is there available on the platform, and uh, we you know we're still in the testing phases. But all the other extensions are working quite well, and uh, we can always help you out exploring them. We have little programs that you can all try out and explore with each and every extension. You know, if you, have, you need any help from us, because we're also using this as part of our uh, teachers training program. So they're using this in their uh, in the classrooms and teaching AI with the help of this particular platform. So um, that is it for uh, you know uh, from my side uh, as part of the presentation. Um, thank you, thank you very much for listening to us and for uh, seeing this demonstration on one of our platforms. Um, any questions? Please feel free to ask us right now. We're ready to uh, address your queries. Mm. Oh, it's amazing! It's a a lot of things you have so uh, thank you very much for your presentation we for sure we have a lot of questions here not only now but later <laughs> thank you so much for your presentation so uh who wants to start with a question bruno Beatrice. Oh, uh, I, uh, we have I also, make a question now? yes, it's just one thing. We have also Simon from China. Welcome, Simon. Hi. Hi, thanks Hi. for coming. So, so Hi, I, I saw you do a wonderful job. Uh, you. Have you ever thought, uh, I saw King Kong in your, uh, uh, in your board, uh, uh, in your board. So, uh, have you ever thought it's snap instead of scratch? Yeah, yes, actually, <laughs> yes. Um, for the older students, for the much older students, we are teaching them with snap. Yeah, we are using, AI, using AI, snap, yes. uh, AI, AI extension for snap also. Yeah, AI extension of King Kong. Yeah, yeah for, uh, for Oxford yes, University. Yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, uh, I have Ken, a small Ken, one. <laughs> yeah, from Ken yeah. Kong. Yeah, Ken, Ken Kong <laughs> is uh, working very closely with us also. He is on our uh, part of our advisory board. So any new things which happen in the world of AI, especially when it comes to education, he you know he lets us know about it, and uh, we work, we work together very closely with him. Yeah, yeah, he's a good teacher. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, very true. He comes, uh, he gives, he, he uh, like uh, had a maybe one uh, presentation with the students also as an AI expert. Um, so he was just talking about how uh, uh, how Snap can be used for. Uh, you know, for students to learn AI, um, we are planning to call him for another session. Uh, for um, right now, exams are happening in India, so maybe once yeah. the exams are over, the teacher, teachers will be free. So we're just planning up it as part of a teacher education program, so they can also you know interact yeah. with him and understand how to use a snap for their you know um, for their classrooms. Yeah, yeah, maybe for primary school students, uh, scratch is better. <laughs> yes, yes, I, yeah. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we've experienced that. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Simon. Um, any other questions? I think uh, in yeah. Siong, uh, Bruno. In the chat box. Bruno, Bruno. Yeah. Hi, Bruno. Hi. Um, thank you. Thanks for your presentation. I learned a lot about Scratch with AI. It's good to to see that there is a, a tools for this. I love Scratch and. I think that AI will will help you. We will learn a lot with 
with with AI with Scratch. Well, okay. Yeah. The question is: uh, In the past, I made a, a project teaching coding for for kids, for teenagers. In in the past of of teaching code, we have su su success, but I think that we fail when when kids when ten, when can teenagers come to us and and they ask us how can I get a job with this knowledge? And I'd like to to ask if you have uh, any way to assure that the the best students will have a job if, if learning coding. Yeah, see, um, uh, with, with, with our particular, you know, a curriculum that we follow, we start off with um, block-based coding for much younger kids. And gradually as they uh, grow older, uh, we switch to uh, something like Python or JavaScript and even C++. But yes, they are already learning that in their computer science classrooms. But what we do is we try to make it fun. We give them projects with which uh, you know they'll, they'll, they won't even see in their computer science classrooms. Uh, say, for example, if it's uh, uh, like you know if it's if, if they're learning Python, we integrate a bit of AI so help to help them uh, carry out computer vision mo uh, models. Uh, you know, to uh, like for example, uh, face tracking or maybe uh, tracking a pen on the screen. You know, it, it gives it gives them the interest. But yeah, uh, another thing is. Um, the, the way the news is also being spread across in India uh, when it comes to uh, jobs like which involve coding and especially the salary packages that are coming. So that it serves, you know, serves an initiative for students to, uh, you know, go for coding jobs. And uh, even in the light of this particular, uh, uh, like, yes, the pandemic has affected everyone. But when it comes to, um, you know, was, uh, like um, decisions like working from home and being able to work from anywhere. So I think that gives a, you know, that, that makes it more attractive for students to uh, opt for going for coding, uh, you know, as a, uh, you know, as a, as a skill. And uh, what we do is um, the way we gradually help them shift from block-based coding, understanding the concepts of computer science, and then suddenly going into uh, high-level uh, programming languages like Python and uh, JavaScript. And you know, so that it, it just helps them ease into that transition. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Hi, I see one, Kim. Uh, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, is there any certification system for AI education for K-12? Yeah, students? I think I saw your, I think you mentioned that in the chat box. Um, right now we are using our own um, certification, but we have, um, when it comes to the school, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, the CBSE, which is the, um, uh, Central Board of School Education in India. What they've done is they have given their own, uh, you know, certificate. Uh, certificate. So we're working closely with them. And whenever the students uh, get, you know, uh, clear that particular exam, they will get that certification. But from our side, we are giving it, uh, you know, for students who are taking our courses individually, uh, we are providing that certification from our end. How can I get? The... Okay. How yes. can I get a document or paper? about the certification system for AI education. How can um, I get a yeah, document to our public the paper? Uh, so, sorry, uh, you were breaking up. I, I can hear you. Can you please repeat okay. it again? How can I get the public document to our paper about the certification for K-12 AI education? Oh, okay, AI education. Um, I am not sure because we are also trying to find that out from uh, our end as well. Uh, the only thing is, since we are working with the uh, school board here in India, so the students are getting that certification, which which is coming with the school board. But when it comes to an international kind of a thing, uh, say for example, if you are tied with an organization like uh, MIT, a media lab, or um, like recently we had a workshop with uh, one of the uh, MIT media lab researchers, uh, AI in space. So those students got the uh, certificate from MIT Media Lab. Well, not, not from us, but they got it from MIT. So maybe if you tied up with another organization similarly who has that uh, kind of a standard, uh, you know, uh, also, uh, and mainly, mainly with the university, that adds more, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, that will add a, a more value to the certification. We are in fact uh, negotiating with a couple of universities to get an affiliation where uh, they complete a course from us. They will get a certificate uh, from us with affiliation of that particular university. So we are 
in talk with a couple of universities from uh, US. So maybe it'll, it'll it's long process. Maybe uh, yeah. four so months since, time. Mm -hmm. since we mostly cater to kindergarten to grade 12, that particular you know uh, thing is not good, but uh, for get, <laughs> giving a certification for someone who is uh, finished their grade 12 you know in college level like their bachelor's or the master's it's quite easy to provide a set kind of certification and working closely with the university even here in india most of the universities are still working on their own ai programs you know it, uh, 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 maybe for the past two years they've just you know included ai as a separate subject from the computer science curriculum uh, you know so it's still taking a bit of time and uh, finding the right people to work with. We have we are like so many universities here. Uh, we just tied up with uh, IIT Madras um, in uh, last year, you know. And uh, what we are doing is we're just working together with them. And the students are getting uh, students who come through our programs. They're getting internships in IIT Madras, uh, short internships, maybe for a month, two months. But that itself is of great value for, for for those students, you know, working in a place like IIT Madras which is one of the top 50 universities in India itself, uh, maybe in the world also. And uh, so that, uh, you know, for when it comes to certification, I'm not really, sh um, uh, you know, it, it depends, but um, I think mainly tying up with a really, you know, uh, pros uh, prospect uh, prospective and prestigious university will add value. Okay. How, as, much, as how, as many, schools, about, uh, yeah. Yeah. About, how about, many schools uh, join the, this curriculum? Yeah. AI curriculum uh, is yeah, this I, applying I, to public yeah. public K twelve school? Yeah, so like see, right globally, now, if you see uh, there right are now, about, uh, sorry. yeah, globally, if you see globally, we have about uh, thousand uh, eight hundred uh, plus students from uh, different part of the world who's going through our courses, and what they're getting is after completing the course, they're getting a certificate from AI World School. So they, they haven't uh, asked us like we need another certification. So they are doing this course just to get the certification from AI World School. So I think we are doing a good branding on that. And then uh, if you look at the uh, Indian scenario, there are uh, close to uh, 35 schools who are working with us. And from each school, you can roughly say about uh, 300 students per way from each school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and then, see, uh, and uh, so, so one 150 uh, students from each school. So, 30, 36 into 300 uh, average, that much of students are undergoing uh, 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 this uh, tutor led courses through our uh, program. And once they come, what they get is a certificate from uh, AI World School. And we also got uh, uh, recognized by uh, Standard ORG and uh, Kids Safety, uh, our, our uh, online platform, our Kids Safety. Uh, uh, listed so uh, these two affiliation we have and along with this affiliation they get, they receive a sort of course complete or course participation certificate from uh, AI World School and once okay. we get and, uh, from... <laughs> hmm. yeah thank you I uh, think so, so, thank you very much uh, I'll just add one more point also so one uh, Kim here in India um, it also depends on the school and what board it follows see some schools follow the CBSE board some schools follow the ITCC board. And you know, depending on them, we have to customize our curriculum accordingly. See, uh, and also requires it depends on the re requirements of the school. Some schools say, no, I want you to teach only students from grade six to eight. Some of them say, okay. no, I want you to teach only from grade eight to grade uh, ten or grade eleven. So, uh, but they're not ready to start from uh, you know from the kindergarten level because they're still not ready. The, their teachers are still not equipped or not. So this is something new for them to. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, we tell them that we we will provide the teacher training program. Uh, we have got years of experience in STEM education. We will our, our trainers will help your teachers, but still they are a bit reluctant to take it up you know and start this. Uh, but yeah, that these are some restrictions. But um, uh, yes, we uh, when it comes to schools. Oh, it, it, depending on what their requirements and how long they wanted, that is our, you know, from uh, from our end as well. Okay, I understand. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. No problem. Um, I have a question. I don't know if you already said that. That maybe I didn't understand. And um, I saw also Wolfgang Slani in the board too, and. Uh, in, yes, the pocket code is. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's possible to develop uh, the app on the mobile as a pocket code. Are you using yes, the app? Uh, uh, our R and D team is working closely with him as well. 
um, because uh, we are working closely with him to develop more AI extensions for Fire Report yeah. and Atu, uh, for Pocket Code as well. So um, right now it's it's a little bit limited. Right now we only have something like okay. for face detection. We have something for uh, speech recognition, uh, OCR, which is it recognizes text uh, with, and uh, the, we're working on uh, GPT three also. Uh, for but we're also working to adding uh, other uh, other extensions like like OSNet and uh, recogni uh, rec um, like a uh, tree uh, like um, you know more advanced um, um, uh, like uh, even machine learning and all that. But uh, it is still it is it's taking, taking some uh, bit of time. Uh, so both of us we're working very closely with uh, Dr. Wolfgang Slani, and uh, you know the, maybe by end of 2022 we can see uh, more extensions being added to the uh, uh, Fire Report and Pocket Code platforms. I am really interested because I am involved in the, in the technovation challenge that is uh, oh yes 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 yes, yes. Yeah. yes you know we've, we've uh, taken part earlier yeah yes and yeah. also they suggest to use up inventor but they started a beginner team now from eight to twelve years old mm -hmm. and it's a a meet up inventor is I don't think is a sweet for this yes yes this yes stage in and uh, in um, but this is, could be very interesting. Another yeah. question, do you, uh, introducing uh, IA in uh, school and at that uh, age is important also because uh, uh, let uh, children to know better about their own uh, learning and they, how they work, you know, the perception, how they, you know, really when you, you understand how your sense uh, works work but uh, there is any activity you do also um, unplug it or um, just to understand how we learn for unplugged, example uh, yeah um, unplugged wise we are just uh, uh, you know working on it we have a, a curriculum team is just seeing how we can use this in an unplugged manner um, it's still in the testing phase we're just try, trying them out in the uh, you know with a set of students in the schools not ready to show them right now but yes maybe in some time we can get an update regarding this AI unplugged uh, activities. Um, just one more point I want to add uh, with respect to, um, as you were saying, with, the, with the technovation. Um, as my colleague uh, Jatin mentioned, we have a foundation called as a PlayLearn Foundation. So we, uh, what PlayLearn Foundation does is we work with, um, we, we have something called as Indian Girls Code. And we reach out to um, uh, you know, schools in India which are teaching underprivileged children. And uh, we teach coding to girls, um, you know, from uh, very underprivileged backgrounds. So one of these, um, in, uh, one of these is at a, something called as Anai Ashram. So Anai Ashram is an orphanage which is only for girls, and uh, it, it, it is also like a women's home, especially for those uh, who are trying to, you know, who have um, um, gone through some bad things in life, and they need a place to stay, and even for uh, you know uh, old old women as well. So it's mainly only for females. So we work with that. Uh, we work with that ashram. And we teach coding and robotics to those kids and try to help them, uh, you know, provide uh, career counseling as well. Not, not us, like uh, another team does that. But, you know, uh, as part of that uh, education, we teach the kids coding and, uh, you know, and other STEM activities as well. Uh, so we've been using pocket code because what happens is those children are quite poor. They can't afford computers. They can't afford laptops. Even their school only has one computer <laughs> and they just use it to demonstrate, you know. Uh, if if their teach if the if their teacher is teaching something like Microsoft uh, Word or Microsoft you know any, any Office application the students just sit in front of a computer and they just see the demonstration. But what we do is we take uh, you know we provide the tablets to the students they do the coding and they learn the coding uh, based on uh, you know Fire Report which does not require any internet and all that and it's easy for them to learn as well. So uh, you know we try just try to find ways to help students you know whichever the background whether from the cities or even from the villages or from any you know particular background. We are we are in fact pitching uh, UNICEF also for fun to develop uh, pocket code <laughs> available for all the uh, underdeveloped uh, countries and um, uh, underprivileged because uh, a lot of schools what happened like they they come for a demo and uh, when we uh, show them the program they're like uh, no we do not have uh, enough laptop or computers in our school but uh, they do that they do have a mobile phone so if they have a mobile phone they can use uh, uh, fido code and teach uh, um, ai so to develop more uh, develop more extension and all we are working with unicef we are 
uh, pitching for uh, some fund from UNICEF so that uh, it will it will be available in uh, all the countries, especially uh, those countries who require uh, special attention and those kind of schools who require special attention. Okay. Um, I have a similar question as Maria. Mm, yeah. Uh, first, uh, I was very impressive uh, for your platform because sometimes I use a uh, teachable machine or machine learning for kids. Uh, sometimes I think that, uh, how about I can use BERT or a transformer in Scratch, but uh, it already uh, made. <laughs> um, it, it, I guess it's, it's still in, you know, it's it's still a prototype. Yeah, uh, it's still ah, working yeah. on the things. It, it's it, uh, yesterday when we were testing it out, it was working. <laughs> Today it didn't work. So anyway, yeah. Uh, <coughs> yes, yes, please, Insyong, please continue. Uh, and my question is, uh, there are um, high level, high, high uh, entry barrier for teachers because they have to know about Scratch how to use Scratch or how to use a platform for teaching AI. Um, do you have any idea uh, for teaching concept of AI, such as backpropagation or uh, perception uh, without using code or programming or um, like, like IST tools, PC? Do you have any idea? No, uh, so uh, as was um, uh, replied to uh, Maria, we are also working on the AI unplugged activities where you know um, where we where, where where there's not much of a requirement for um, computers or coding, but um, that is still something that is uh, still undergoing uh, some testing. We are just checking with the students also how they're receiving those particular lessons. Uh, uh, there are, there are some people who are just teaching the theory part of uh, AI, they're just telling them about it, and then uh, maybe. They are taking them to uh, platforms like Google Teachable Machines to experience AI or uh, other things like AutoDraw or many other platforms. You know, they just, uh, they're, they're doing that. But uh, maybe we can, uh, we're also working on something similar, but um, I don't think we have anything concrete to show or to tell right now. But uh, we, once we have something, we can show it to you or we, we can keep in touch. We can collaborate also when it comes to this as a fellow educators. Yeah, yeah, sure. We can. Uh... Uh, share the uh, presentation with you we, uh, or what we will do we'll customize a presentation for your uh, educators so that you can share it with your educators uh, will that work yeah we'll send it as a pdf file it's easier for you yeah. to share them. <laughs> yeah so that you can share it with your uh, uh, other school friends or uh, other uh, educators from uh, your uh, community from your contact and uh, as as Borwe mentioned, after after, after this, we'll uh, send you a uh, Google form. Uh, so LOSI can circulate it uh, among the community, among all your network. So Thank once you. once uh, so yeah, to create uh, course access, we require is your full name and uh, your uh, email address and the location you are from and um, any any contact number. So using that, we'll create all the course access and you can access the course. Mm -hmm. So all, all of Great. all of you, all of you want to explore only the scratch course, or you want to explore some other course also. Thank you very much. It's very interesting. There's uh, no. a lot of material yeah, to we're... read, to analyze, to understand. Yeah, as well. <laughs> the the woman that you teach, the teach you, you teach a woman, a housewife. Uh, this is, was also wonderful. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think... want to. Yeah. Uh, I want to uh, introduce teachertech.org, but they, they, they said the, the teacher, uh, the schools, there are only one computer. So I think uh, Orfgan's uh, Catabat may be better than a uh, uh, machine. If you want to teach teachertech, you, you must have a, a, a embroidery machine to, and the computer. So uh I, I know in india uh uh lots of schools and in village maybe they're, 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 they're yeah. not good condition there so so uh i, I saw uh, uh work on is my one of my friends so i saw on his uh twitter she 
he wants to go to India and teach the girls uh, learning code with uh, microphones. And that's very interesting. <laughs> that's very interesting. <laughs> so that, uh, that he did a very good what? job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what 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 is it? What is that organization called? Oh, wait. pardon. Uh, you you mentioned about someone who's uh, teaching in India using microphone. So you yeah, have yeah. an idea what is that? What is yeah, the name yeah, of that? Yeah, Wolfgang. Wolfgang Strani. Yeah. Uh, oh, I remember okay, he okay, went, through, yeah, yeah, he went to India. Okay, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Through okay. yeah. <laughs> through Slani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes, Lani. Yeah, so I, I think uh, we, I, know, we also I know him. Tried... I know him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, no, okay. actually, actually, we, we also uh, tried doing something in Trichy with him, uh, with the schools, right, uh, Borwe, about yeah, the yeah. same project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, if it weren't for uh, Doctor Nono, this group, <laughs> he was one who introduced us. <laughs> yeah. <to us>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Thanks for your presentation. Thanks for sharing all the materials with us and the, um, the possibility of exploring your pl platforms. For sure, people are going to have a good time <laughs> playing and trying with that. We are very curious about that. Uh, I'd like yeah. to know if uh, there's someone else who wants to make a question. Kingsley from Africa, uh, Ghana. Or someone else want to ask us anything before we finish? I, I only to say it's a wonderful project. I am very happy about these ideas. I I, I think uh, we all uh, share some ideas. I try to push this coding in a public system, but it's very difficult because many times the education authorities don't have the same idea uh, with, with us. I, I try to push and push and push. We have five years to push coding in, in kindergarten. And many times say, hey, in child no, no need this uh, information. But today, when the, when the parents don't have time to, to, to with, with the children, give a cell phone or a tablet and the child only move and entertainment but no education and this is my idea with the parents in my project try to find the the tablet with the parents because the authorities don't have money to to pay this tablet and this is a, is a very is a similar situation i listen in india or china or other countries uh, that uh, public system don't have money to give a tablet for every <laughs> child in the schools and he, this is the same in Mexico. I try to push mm. big, uh, and, and when this information is very good to show. Uh, yeah, in, in, Jackie, uh, sorry. Uh, you try to show these uh, local authorities in education? Yes, yes, we try to do that. Here in India, it's also uh, because the, main, the, the ruling government has started this, uh, like, sorry, had they just changed his national education policy yeah. to make sure that coding uh, is compulsary from sixth grade onwards sixth and AI grade should onwards. become an elective from eighth grade onwards. Mm -hmm. That's why everyone is like getting into this, uh, you know, AI and coding bandwagon. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, even, even after <clears throat> passing that uh, rule, uh, the, schools are still, the schools are still ill equipped. When it comes to the government schools, as we mentioned, you know, some of them don't even have computers. So uh, they're not able to, they don't know how to teach. They just have one computer, which they are just, you know, showing as a demo, they're showing videos or something. Uh, thanks to the help of some NGOs who, uh, you know, uh, or, or through some CSR programs with some companies like uh, Ford, Amazon, uh, you know, big corporates, they gift uh, computers to the schools and the students. But again, uh, they don't have the people who will maintain these computers. What happens is it's, it's just like a gift, but you don't have the person like a computer science teacher who will maintain the, the uh, so it's, yeah, it's still a long way to go through. Uh, the government may propose something, but <laughs> people, it's not only when, when it comes to coding. Uh, I, I myself am from the uh, biotechnology background, bioengineering, and I got into STEM education. So earlier when I was working with uh, some um, uh, biotech labs, so the same thing, the government gives a lot of funding to the uh, labs, 
but no one is uh, no one is there to properly handle the equipment. A uh, lot of equipment they, they, they you know they get a lot of funding to buy lots of material and it just stays in the corner and not not being used properly. So it's it's there like that you know just uh, on a whim they purchase material they use it. But uh, yeah, there, there is a need to you know get people to uh, get properly trained to use equipment to get interested to use the equipment. So that is uh, you know um, I think that is a uh, that is a call for us as educators to maybe we are interested, but we have to also help other people get interested. Thank you. Yeah. So it will, uh, in India, it will take at least another two, three years to build a, that kind of infrastructure in all the schools to facilitate uh, AI education and coding. And for that, there are many NGOs and many companies working on that. There is some more uh, initiative called uh, Scale India Mission. Even we are working with them also. So they are also in the same mission to create uh, uh, this kind of infrastructure in different schools, uh, mostly schools in villages where uh, uh, computers uh, is a very rare commodity. Mainly they focus on uh, school drop-offs, this uh, Skill India mission. Mm. So th those who are interested in learning something like uh, mechanics, they, you know, they want to work on cars, they want to set up their own workshop. So they, you know, they give them the skilling only for that. You don't have to concentrate on other stuff. Uh, those interested in computer science or those interested in commerce, they train them in accountancy software. So it really focus only on that particular skill for, the, for those people. It's the passion of Resnick, you know, that says Resnick, that we, uh, we have to involve uh, our, our interests. You know? Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, excuse me, can I ask one more question? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. sure. Do you use any AI-based uh, supporting system for your online uh, platform? Um, I am not uh, really much into tech. Uh, you know, we have a, a R&D team. <clears throat> what I would request you to do is, in Sion, um, John, uh, please, you can send us an email. I can forward it to our R&D team, uh, whatever technical queries you have, and then, you know, we can get back to you, you know, accordingly. So uh, 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 what I do know is that our platform is uh, like we, it's built on a Moodle, a Moodle LMS, and our uh, forms are uh, you know, uh, uh, put up on that. Whether it's Scratch for AI or Snap for AI, it's built on uh, you know integrated that platform, Moodle LMS. Because I think it's better to give feedback to students when they have any problem in. Uh, learn AI. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I agree. I agree. Yes. Uh, um, like uh, um, our courses are built with a feedback system, with checks for you know, through a, you know, through the form of assessments and quizzes mainly. But uh, in India, uh, many of the schools still prefer tutor led. Okay. So after they, we finish a particular module, we have a challenge. Uh, like we give them a project they have to do within that period. Okay, this helps us understand how well they've understood the, you know, or whatever uh, concept of principle of AI they're learning in that module. We also uh, conduct, uh, you know, short PTAs uh, with the parents and, uh, you know, uh, uh, just explain to them that, you know, your child is strong in this one. And so they, uh, they, the parents are more interested to understand from us how their child is doing in the classroom and, you know, whether they can, uh, whether they can consider going for a career in, uh, you know, coding or in AI or any else, or maybe in, uh, even in robotics. So we do have, you know, it's more of a face-to-face -face kind of thing right now when it comes to uh, India. Um, uh, with the students, we have the um, assessment in the form of the challenges. And uh, instead of just uh, you know, doing a quiz or something, they have much more fun creating the uh, program or creating the, you know, doing a robotics project in the classroom. And we can understand from that how well they're doing in that platform. I think you can use knowledge tracing after uh, student uh, challenged when they yeah. solve a quiz and um, you can okay. collect the data okay then we can trace their knowledge yes yes that's what we're doing but it's for us right now it's uh, mainly like a pen and paper kind of a thing uh, we uh, pen and paper in the sense we collect the data and keep it in the form of uh, you know uh, excel sheets and to see and we can observe from that well the student is doing in the subject 
it's not nothing yes. it's not anything automated right now <laughs> our teachers are doing the uh, manual <laughs> work when it comes to checking how the students are progressing in that particular subject okay i think we we're done now <laughs> we have lots of questions i want to to thank you very much jatin and daniel for such a good presentation so good to... it was our pleasure yeah. yes thank you so much for uh, spending your thank weekend you. on, on, <laughs> almost uh, more than more than one hour we spent here no 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 yeah it's uh, one and a half hour i guess <laughs> Yes, and yeah, for your <laughs> your good explanations and answer a lot of questions, it's so so we are so grateful for that. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and looking forward, looking forward to catch catch up again. Uh, yeah, it, it it'll be nice to have another discussion like this. Yes, thank you, thank you all thank for you. coming. People who wake up early or still wake up. <laughs> Uh, later the night for being with us and uh, but sometimes it's very good to to meet you all in real time is that it yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm saying why don't you organize something uh, some physical conference we all can <laughs> yeah, yes, and share yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we would, we would love we would love to come to brazil <laughs> oh you're welcome <laughs> yes <laughs> that's a good idea So bye bye people thank you very bye, much bye bye thank yeah. you bye bye, bye. 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 bye.